we must build a foundation that will survive any personality, any individual that will speak and stand on its own for years to come and will build not only for the status quo, but will build excellence in the arts for expansion, for the kind of programming that this community deserves and has shown that it wants and will support. So that is a dream that we have. And can you imagine from where we've been, where we can go? It's exciting. It's almost impossible to put before you a vision that would, I think, match what this community, in fact, will achieve with the kind of support that is evidence in this program. And I want to say today to you, to our trustees, to each of you in the audience who have given your time and effort in so many different ways, that it must be with your strong support that we make this happen. But it will, and it can, and that's the encouraging thing. We can reach this goal and go beyond it. We can make this community the finest representative of the arts in the United States of America. And I think from your enthusiasm, who says we can do that? Are you all with us on this? All right. I want to thank you. Be with us now. We're going to need your help, but it's going to happen. God bless you. This is a story about a group of men and women who decided to make a difference. It's about creative energy and strategic vision. It's about entrepreneurial spirit and the spiritual side of life. It's about positive thinking and positive linking. This is a story of a unique and ambitious campaign to collectively support the arts like never before in America. This is the story of United Arts of Central Florida. Orlando, Florida is on a roll. It's a city on the move in a hot market. Newsweek magazine recently chose Orlando as one of America's 10 best places to live and work. It's also located next to some of America's best places to play. That's why it's the number one tourist destination in the world. Newsweek wrote about gleaming marble office towers balanced by quaint street-level touches. Brick streets, fountains, spires, wrought iron lamps. The magazine could also have written about Orlando's canopy of green, of ancient oaks and sparkling lakes, about visions of beauty in the daily environment. The one million plus residents who live in Orlando and its edge cities are not blind to the beauty of their natural environments. They're also learning to appreciate the language of the downtown facelift. It's a visual expression of color and texture, scale and space, of order and unity, glamour and glitz. There's an NBA franchise for the new arena, an expanded county convention center, improved parks and recreation, and a southern gateway project that includes municipal plans for the next 75 years. I'm Steve Rondinero, News Center 2, reporting from downtown Orlando. You know, there's little doubt that aesthetically and architecturally, this city is on the map. It's coming of age. The leadership believes it is going to be much more than just that, that Orlando is going to be a world-class city. We'll find out why when we come back in just a moment. With me are two highly visible Orlando leaders. They share the vision and they're working hard to make it all happen. We have Jacob Stewart, Executive Vice President of the Greater Orlando Chamber of Commerce. And we have Mary Upchurch, an AT&T Executive and a trustee of United Arts. For the past several months, you and Mayor Bill Frederick have been working closely trying to, to make this all happen and to pull it all together. A lot of energy, a lot of effort. Why the timing? Why was it uh, so necessary at this particular time? Steve, it's uncomfortable maybe to talk about, but at the time the mayor took the leadership reins, several of the arts organizations were uh, heading for bankruptcy. And that's all changed now, thanks to United Arts of Central Florida. 
Mary, what organizations are involved? There are seven principal organizations, Steve, involved with United Arts. The Bach Festival Society, the Orlando Museum of Art, the Orlando Science Center, the Civic Theater of Central Florida, Southern Ballet Theater, the Florida Symphony, and the Orlando Opera Company. It's a pretty diverse group. Yes, it is. Now, the roles that both of you played in the campaign, Jacob? Well, it's a funny thing. Uh, at, the Chamber is committed very much to the United Arts of Central Florida. And uh, as a result, the Chamber has kind of put me on uh, as executive on loan to United Arts. So I've been really involved uh, almost full time from the very beginning. Mary, you came from the corporate side of things. Yes, um, I happen to have the responsibility of being one of the trustees associated with United Arts. As well as that, our firm is involved with some of the community efforts that have taken place, as well as the workplace giving program. Jake, what happened at the community meetings? Well, it was a chance for our mayor uh, to really showcase uh, the importance of the arts. And we invited a host of business people together in a room and let the mayor really talk to them. Uh, although it was a group, essentially it was one-on-one -on -one, uh, relative to the importance of the arts as far as Greater Orlando is concerned. Some critics would say, if you like the opera, buy a ticket. You support it. Why doesn't the, uh, the admission ticket cut it? For over 3,000 years, tickets have never uh, cut it, as you say. In fact, there's been patrons of the arts for as long as we can remember and record arts. The patrons today, however, can no longer be kings and queens, but have got to be business and government here. And that's what United Arts represents now, that kind of partnership. There's also a responsibility of the arts organizations to try and make what they have to offer accessible to the community. And to reap their sole amount of revenue to support their arts from the ticket goer would mean that a lot of people would be excluded. You price them right out of admission. Right. Now, you talked about the arts organizations that are involved. Were they active participants in putting together the, the campaign? And, and Extremely the active. Uh, in fact, each our individual arts organization had their own fundraising goal that they had to meet. And we're very pleased and very proud to say that they have all met them. Steve, we could not have made United Arts of Central Florida work without the support of the various arts organizations. That's been a critical ingredient in our success formula. Now, how about the public? How do, how do they participate? Been very actively involved. If you recall, we had Arts in April, which was an opportunity to really showcase the arts and raise the community awareness. Uh, we were fortunate enough to cap that with the picnic with the arts at Lock Haven Park. And we had tremendous out, outpouring of responsibility and support from the community and families that participated. Everybody had a really good time. It sounds like you both are tickled with the way this is all turning out. It's been a real special moment in this, uh, the history of this community. And how do we size up with the rest of the country? Um, it's funny, when you consider, first of all, we're the only city in Florida raising money for the arts in an umbrella organization. And 